Math 242, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta, and we are covering section 8.4 in verse matrices. The last section we covered was 8.5, so this is weird that I'm doing things in a different order. In your homework, do 8.5 first. So, our first question starts off with asking us to multiply two matrices together. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, AB equals 5, 7, 2, 3 times 3, negative 7, negative 2, positive 5. Okay, so we did that thing with the coyote and the roadrunner go like 15 minus 14 1 negative 35 plus 35 0 6 minus 6 0 and negative 14 plus 15 is 1 so if you missed the lecture on matrix multiplication you're probably sitting there going what just happened well go look at that lecture the answer is this right here what we ended up getting is we ended up getting the identity matrix when we multiply those together. So when that happens, it's the equivalent of like if you had a three and you multiplied it by one third and you ended up getting one. Um, these guys are, you know, you could say this is the reciprocal, but these guys are, are inverses. This is the multiplicative inverse of three, one third is. And so that's what we have here. We have inverses, and this is called inverse matrices. These are inverse matrices. So let's just write something down. We can say that B is the inverse. We can also say the inverse matrix, but I'll just say the inverse of A. A is the inverse of B. And so what are they going to be asking you to do in 8.4? They're going to ask you, they're going to give you a matrix and they're going to say, find the inverse of that matrix. Now, this is the one time if you have two square matrices that multiply together and give you the identity, if you multiplied them together the other way, if we went B times A, it would also give us the identity. So that's a property of inverse matrices. They are um, inverse matrices with each other. They are commutative. Um, inverse matrices will only work for square matrices. That's where the number of rows equals the number of columns. So let's go ahead and find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. And that is the goal of 8.4. And we'll even show you an application at the end. So find the inverse of this matrix here. Um, so now I don't know what it is. And when you don't know what something is in math, you'll let you'll look 10 times smarter if you make that unknown equal a variable like x. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. I want to go like this. I want to go 4, 5, 2, 3. And I don't know what the inverse matrix is. Um, so when I don't know, I'm going to go ahead and let there be variables there. x y z w i'm going to look 40 times smarter now because of that and i know that if i were to find the inverse and multiply those together i would end up getting the identity matrix for two by two matrices okay so what am i going to do here i'm going to go ahead and do some matrix multiplication and we'll see what we end up getting here we end up getting 4x plus 5z so 4x plus 5z. The next one is 4y plus 5w. Y plus 5w. And then down there we're going to get 2x plus 3z. 2x plus 3z. And then this last one is going to be 2y plus 3w. 2y plus 3w and that is the matrix on the left hand side this equals 1 0 0 1 
Okay, so these two matrices are equal, which means the corresponding entries are equal. So I'm going to set the 4x plus 5z equal to 1. And I'm going to set 4y plus 5w equal to 0. And 2x plus 3z equals 0. And the last one is going to be a 2y plus 3w. That's going to equal 1. Now, when you first look at this, you're thinking, I've got four equations and four variables. But before you panic too much, I've got to get another piece of paper. Before you panic too much, um, you just have on the left hand side equations that are just x's and z's. So we should be able to solve that. And then, same over here, you just, these two equations just have y's and w's. So let's go ahead and solve this. And, you know, we've already learned how to solve systems of equations. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to kill off x by multiplying the bottom equation by a negative 2. See, that's going to put opposites there. So I'll write those two equations down. So I'm working with these two equations here. So I have 4x plus 5 z equals 1, and then this is negative 4x minus 6z equals, um, negative 2 times 0 is 0. So when I add those together, those guys are out of there. We have negative z equals 1, z equals negative 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug that. It's going to look weird if you're looking at the PDF on this. I'm going to plug z equals 1 into the bottom equation. And so we'll go like this. Whoa. Okay. And I'll make a little arrow here and a little arrow there. So, you know, maybe people can figure that out. And so I have 2x plus 3 times z, which is negative 1, equals 0. So 2x, and I'll kind of finish this off quickly, 2x equals 3, and x equals 3 halves. So we have that right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve these equations here, or this system right here, and I'm going to go ahead and kill off the... Um, the y by multiplying the bottom by negative 2. So it's going to look very similar. Negative 2. So I'll write out both of those equations. 4y plus 5w equals 0. Negative 4y minus 6w equals negative 2. And I add those equations together. I end up getting negative w equals negative 2. w equals 2 in which then I'm going to plug back into one of those equations up there. I think I'll plug it into the top one. It doesn't matter which one you plug it in. I'm going to come down here and for the sake of when we PDF it we want to make sure people are going to be confused with that aren't they? And so I'm going to get 4y plus 5 times w. So equals 0. 4y equals negative 10. y equals negative 10 over 4 or negative 5 over 2. Whew. Okay, so what have I just done? I have just found x, y, z, and w values and um we try to do that for this matrix. This is find the inverse of A and look what the inverse is. So um, the inverse actually has special notation. We'll get to that. Let's write up the inverse. We're going to write X, which is 3 halves, Y, which is negative 5 halves, Z, which is negative 1, and W, which is 2. 
And so what does that equal? That equals the inverse of our matrix. So remember, um, our matrix, our original matrix is called A. So the inverse of that, this is going to remind you of inverse functions. You write A with a little negative one there. So it doesn't mean 1 over A, it just means this is the inverse of that matrix A. And for some reason, this is going to be very important in math. And um, we'll show you an example at the end how this helps us with cryptography. Okay, you guys should be able to understand that example. Let's go ahead and do a next example. Here's the deal. This was painful. And if they ask you to do this in your homework, it's very painful to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive a technique on PowerPoint where you can do this within like one or two steps instead of writing all this down. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so some of you might want to skip past this PowerPoint part. It will go for a few minutes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say let A, the matrix A, which is A, B, C, D, um, let it equal A, B, C, D, and we want to find the inverse. What we're actually getting is we're deriving a formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. So we're going to do what we did in the last problem. We're going to say we don't know what it is, and so we're going to call it X, Y, Z, W. Okay, so A, B, C, D times X, Y, Z, W equals 1, 0, 0, 1. That is the identity, and I'm going to do the matrix multiplication on the left-hand side. I end up getting that. This looks really messy, but let's go ahead and write out the equations. The four equations I get are those four equations. So this is more general than the last example we, we did. So now what I'm going to do is I want to kill off X here. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative C and the bottom equation by positive A. And when I do that, I end up getting that. I'm going to add those two equations together. I end up getting AD minus BC times Z equals a negative C. So when I solve for Z, I divide, and I end up getting for Z negative C over AD minus BC. I'm going to plug that Z back into, okay, so um, actually you might notice before I plug it in, the AD minus BC is the determinant of that matrix. And so I just replace that with debt A. And I'm going to plug that expression back into one of the equations. I picked the bottom one. And so when I do that, I get CX plus D times the expression that I found for Z equals zero. I um, end up dividing everything by C, taking one of the things to the other side. And I, well, OK, so I haven't divided by C, but I have taken this guy to the other side, and then I'm going to divide by C. I'm going to get X equals D over debt A. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details of the other equations. They're going to be very similar. And so when I, when I do that, I end up getting Y equals that and W equals that. So let's throw it all into one matrix. There it is. The matrix right there. Uh, I've just put those guys in the matrix for X, Y, Z, W. And notice that each of those elements of that matrix has a 1 over debt A or 1 over determinant A, which I can factor out as a scalar in front of that matrix. So my result is going to be A inverse equals the determinant, 1 over the determinant of A, and then I have this crazy thing right here. So what do you do? Well, usually I say you have to memorize this. You switch your DNA, so you switch your DNA, and then you negate your B and C, and you keep them where they are. You do not switch them. And so that's how I remember. Switch your DNA, and B, C is, you know, what people would use in a history class. Well, they're changing that. And B, C is negative. It's, it's way in the past. So that's how I remember I negate my B, C, and then the one over the determinant. So this sure beats the way that I did the other problem where I um, had to write everything out and do all the equation, systems of equations, this is going to be the formula we use, and the rest of this section is going to be um, comparatively easy compared to what we've seen. Okay, now we've done the derivation of this formula right here. Um, actually, I should say that A is actually 
A, B, C, D. So we proved in the PowerPoint that if you have any two by two matrix, you can find the determinant this way. So how does this work? Well, let's go ahead and crank out some examples. Um, oh, by the way, there are more general topics. We can do the inverse of a three by three or a four by four matrix. Um, but this is not a linear algebra class. This is a pre-calculus class. So we're not going to do the inverse of a 3x3, three three, which is more complicated than this, or a 4x4 four four or higher. So let's go ahead and figure out what the inverse is of this first matrix. So a inverse, you go 1 over the determinant. What is the determinant? 4 times, uh, 2 times 4 minus 8 times 1. So 8 minus 8. Whoa, okay, so this is bad. This makes us cry. So there's, there's us crying. So this could happen sometimes when you have a two by two matrix where the determinant is zero. And um, when that happens in your homework, you say that this is not invertible. It has no inverse matrix. And there are some matrices out there. And if you take linear algebra, you're gonna see um, you're going to study this a little more and see why that could be important. Let's go ahead and take the inverse of this 2x2 two two matrix right here. Um, A inverse is 1 over the determinant. So the determinant happens to be n minus 3 because I'm multiplying that. So um, negative 3 minus 10. So that's actually negative 13. So there's 1 over the determinant. And then what do I do? I switch my DNA. So the one goes there, the negative three goes down there. And then what do I do with my BC? My BC, I negate. So this is a negative two, negative five. Now, when they say find the inverse matrix, it has to be all included in one matrix, at least at this level. So I'm gonna multiply through by the negative one over 13. So, um, what I end up getting is I end up getting negative 1 over 13, 5 over 13, because there's two negatives there, 2 over 13, and 3 over 13. And that completes the problem for that. Let's go ahead and do another problem. Find the inverse of this matrix right here. A equals one, two, three, seven. So A inverse is one over the determinant. The determinant is seven minus six. So one over one. I switch my DNA. So seven goes there, one goes down there, I negate my B and C. So negative two, negative three. So we don't want to write our answer with a one over one in front of it. So we're gonna go A inverse equals seven, negative two, negative three, one. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is just dumb. Why are we doing this? Um, I'm going to turn it back over to the PowerPoint and we will do a cryptography example. Other applications would be solving linear systems, rotations of the plane, um, solving differential equations. There are many applications of finding the, the inverse, did I say determinant, the inverse of a two by two or just an n by n matrix. So let us turn it back over to PowerPoint. Okay, so we're seeing applications of inverse matrices and um, let's take a look at something. Suppose you have a message, um, we'll make the message be math bomb. And um, how can we um, encode this using numbers? Well, without getting into base two and ASCII, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the naive way where M is the 13th letter of the alphabet and A is the first letter of the alphabet, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out, let's see, there's eight letters there. So I'm gonna write out eight numbers. 
So any bad guy, when they see this, they can see, they can figure out pretty easily that this says math bomb. So what I'm going to do with this uncoded data is I'm going to break it up into blocks, blocks of two. These are called blocks. So there's blocks of two, and these are actually one by two matrices. There's four of them. Now I'm going to have a key. Now this was the matrix that we just found the inverse of. Um, when I was doing this on the paper. And then this this is the inverse there. We're gonna send that over. There it was. And this is how I'm going to encode this thing that says math bomb. I'm going to do matrix multiplication. So this is a one by two times a two by two. And you can verify that when you do that, you end up getting another one by two, which is 1633. And then this one gives you 4496, etc. So now let's say I have a friend over in the UK, I send this out, and if the bad guys get this, they'll be like saying, okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and then they'll put a P there. And then they'll go, oh, 33, A, B, C, and they'll get to the end of the alphabet, and they'll go, whoa, what is that? And then the bad guys will be like thrown off because they don't know what that is. Now, your friend in the U UK has the key. You encoded it using matrix A. He's going to decode it using this. Now, how did he get this? Well, maybe you physically gave him this, this matrix, or maybe you use something called public key, which we're not going to get into. But this is what he's going to do for decoding. He's going to break these up into blocks of two. So here's 1633, which was gotten by going 13-1-A, and he's going to go 13-1-A times A inverse. And A times A inverse is the identity, which is kind of like 1, and it brings you back to where you started from. So he's going to hit, but he he's not going to go times A. He's just going to get this stuff, and he's going to multiply each of these blocks by A inverse, and he gets the original message. So we say that that's decoded, it's the uncoded message. And he, he goes through his alphabet and realizes you just sent him a message that says math bomb. So this completes section 8.4, do your homework, have a good day.